So welcome back, friends. Last night, I was posed with a very interesting conundrum. It was a private message, and uh, one of my subscribers asked me, if you had to choose only one axe of your entire collection, which number is probably close to 100, but you could only have one, which would it be? Well, today I'm going to share that with you. The first brand that washed out from my number one pick was any of the axes from Prandi, which was really disappointing to me because I love the, the handle shapes. I love the shapes of the heads. They're very innovative. They're very, uh, they're very not, they feel really good and they work well with the body. Problem with them, and I have, I think I have nine or 10 of them. Every one that I own has a loose head. Every one I had. And so, you know, and some guys will say, well, that's not a big deal. You know, you can make a new handle or you can re wedge it and, and all of that. Yeah, that's true. However, you know, it goes back to that same argument that we have with, you know, the guys always make against like Glock pistols. Glock pistols, I have several of them, never, they never malfunction. There's no break in period. You take them out of the box and they just work and they work and they work and they work. I mean, it almost be has become the benchmark. Uh, what the standard of, of what you know what we expect for reliability and you get something else and they say well you need to put 10 boxes through it or two boxes for it you know so before it become reliable well i say to that no no because if if glock can do it or if grand force brooks can make an x handle uh, that never comes loose then why can't prandy why can't the other manufacturers? So I just don't buy in that excuse. And if you're going to invest money in a nice tool like this, I mean, come on, you should not have ha you should not have to deal with a loose handle. So that when I went and checked, even some of them that I hadn't used before, when I took them out and I checked them this morning, every one of them that I grabbed uh, was loose, really loose, dangerously loose, and essentially unusable without putting a new handle in. All right, let's go to the second one I can't recommend, and that is. The Husqvarna axes, which was really a disappointment to me because I have, uh, when I first got these a couple years ago, I recommended these to a lot of people and I had really great luck with them. They were a great quality steel, of course, Swedish made by one of the major manufacturers and rebranded for Husqvarna. But again, the same problem, whoever's making them, they're not hanging them correctly because I have three of them and I checked them all today. All three of them have loose handles. And again, if we can, if one manufacturer can do it, then why not everyone else? Yes, I know it's a budget tool. I know that it's, uh, um, you know, a little bit less money, but it's unsafe to have handles that, that come loose. If Grand Force can do it, if I can do it on the ones that I hang that don't come loose, I would expect someone who's doing this professionally to be able to do that. And I, even at this price point, at at fifty, sixty dollars, this is unacceptable and just shouldn't happen, especially three times. And number three, what many people in the forums and online consider to be the cream of the crop, the best of the best, this is an Autine axe right here that was built for Jack. And it, on the very first day of using it, the handle had completely failed. I mean, you can see this, this is unacceptable here. So not, we're not just, uh, uh, the budget axes are not just having problems like the Husqvarna's, but something like this that should be absolutely perfect uh, the first day out we used it was loose. And then of course I did a video investigating it and there were some 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 skullduggery going on, some hidden things uh, that were tried that were covered up that shouldn't have been done this way. Um, so no one's exempt. You got to be able to hang the handle right. And what it usually comes down to is two things. How wet is your wood? It's easy to check. I mean, you can go on Amazon, you can get a moisture meter for 20 bucks. You got to have dry wood and you've got to take the time and make sure that it fits properly. This of all the axes, this one has been the worst, the Autine. And here, of course, is the axe of which I judge all others by, um, the Grand Force Brooks. It's not the most expensive, uh, but of all my, all my experience, in my opinion, I think it's the best. I have six of these, six Grand Force Brooks axes, and not one of them, not one of them ever has, has given me a problem. I've used them on cold days. I've used them on hot days. Never have I had anything chip. It is the quality of the steel uh, that I measure everything else by. But more importantly, I've never had a handle come loose. So apart from all of the perfect, working perfectly with the hand and with the body and, and perfect ergonomics and excellent quality steel and edge retention and all those things, the handles don't fail. I have used these axes 
90, 98% of the time over everything else I own because I just like them. I like everything about them. And if something was gonna fail, and it's something that I own that's been abused, it's been these. So, of course, Grand Force Brooks is the brand that I'm going to stick with. Which model? That's the hard part. This was a tough and important decision. And so what I did is I, I'd already kind of made the decision last night, uh, but I slept on it just to be sure. And what was re really confirmed uh, it, it to me today is when I went out to the shop uh, to, to go get some of the axes and to share with you, um, I, have, I have them in three different locations. I have um, a couple buckets. So I've got them sticking in buckets and I've got some long-term storage on shelf. And when I went to uh, get, get th this axe that I'm gonna share with you, it was um, in amongst my tools that I use all the time. And, and that just speaks volumes to me of all the things that I have and, and all the different options. This is the one that I keep going back to time and time again. Also, I wanted to, to make sure that I, th this was a broad decision that would cover, uh, cover a lot of guys, you know, not just myself and my own personal needs. Not everyone has, uh, you know, 100 acres of timber. You know, some guys maybe just go cut a little bit of firewood or maybe they take it camping and they want something that they can keep in the truck or something you can put in a backpack. So I tried to figure all that in. This is not going to be a choice for someone that's a hardcore lumberjack. It's just not big enough. But with that being said, a full-on, full-size, uh, three and a half, four-pound axe is not suitable for for majority of people. So, that's kind of what I was thinking when I came up with it. So, when I decided what the number one, if I could only have one, what I decided was this: is that um, I would have two because it's my channel and I can make the rules. So, this is what I would choose. And you might be surprised. No, it's not the small forest axe uh, that I love. That I probably use more than anything else because if I could only have one that's not big enough. So what I would choose if I had to come down to it would be the Grand Forest Brooks the large forest axe would be number one. The large forest axe is about another four or five inches six inches maybe longer than the than the small forest axe but what it is is it, it is truly a two-handed axe that you can do some real work with. It can't replace a full-size American felling axe, but it bridges the gap. It's good for splitting wood. It's not so heavy that you can't put it in a pack. Uh, you can fell medium-sized trees with it. You can split wood with it. It's got a nice strong pole in it. You can do pit tent stakes. It just works for everything. It is just the, it's just perfect. This and the small forest axe, if, you, if you're gonna have three, you know, of course that would be a nice one-two combination, but this is the one that I would choose. Quality, 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 uh, made by people who understand axes, made to work with the human body, and it's just a pleasure to own. The axe, I think that the second one that I would choose, um, which is more, I thought it was a novelty when I first got it, and I, I, I loved it. You know, it's, it was just so charming and, and cute, the little small, for, the little small uh, hand axe. This is Grand Force Brooks as well. But this also, both these axes I found in my, in my toolbox because I take them all the time. Whenever I go camping, I take this little guy. Whenever I'm splitting a small kindling by the wood stove, I have this little guy. I just, I just adore it. It's just the most wonderful thing. It is not truly an axe per se. It's almost not really even a hatchet. It's a small hand hatchet, uh, but it's just so delightful for lots of different things. You can carve with it. Uh, you can whittle with it. You can do small detail work. I do a lot of work, carpentry work. I end up grabbing this thing and using it. It's good for splitting small kindling, but it's just, I think more than anything else, it's just, it gives me the fizz. It's just a delightful, delightful little treasure. I mean, you couldn't give someone a nicer gift for a Christmas or birthday than one of these little Grand Force Brooks hand hatchets. I mean, they're just, they're just gorgeous. So these would be the two that I would choose. If this is all I had in my shop, and this is all, all that, that I could access. I would. Uh, I don't think I would. I don't think I would really miss anything, uh, anything else. I just think the world of them, and I love them. Now, if you let's say you don't have uh, 150, 200 dollars to spend on an axe, and you think that that's insane, and I understand that a lot of people do. I also want to include a budget option. Let's say that you don't want to. You don't want to spend 150 dollars on a on an axe. You're not a lumberjack. You're not a carpenter. But you want to have something that's reliable. That's not going to let you down. That decision is simple. This was also in my toolbox with the other two, and it's the Cold Steel Trail Boss. What can you get these things for? $30, $40? Never, no problem with the head, never loose, great ergonomics, good steel, good edge retention. I love this axe, I use it all the time. And it's also really good for throwing.
A lot of positive comments uh, about uh, continuing with the Manly Manners. Manly Manners is a little book written in 1913 called Don'ts for Husbands. Uh, I will put a link in the description if you'd like to purchase these. They're like four or five dollars on Amazon. A uh, very interesting advice that helps us and uh, what we try to do is to see how it applies to us today. So let's jump in. Page three, Manly Manners tells us, don't be too grave and solemn. Raise a bit of fun in the home now and then. A lot of people have, you know, that's fun, interesting. Me, me and Mrs. Mrs. W and I were talking about that the other day, and, and she was uh, looking at some high school reunion pictures, and you know, had had, kind of, you know, that's what things she uses Facebook for is to kind of stay, stay acquainted with these people. And she commented on how many of her friends have turned into old people uh, that uh, have just kind of given up on life, and and they they do what they do, um, and they're 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 beyond uh, trying new, taking new adventures or trying new things or or learning new things or or getting outside of their comfort zone. How was it Pink Floyd put it so perfectly that they've come be comfortably numb? I think that that's an easy trap to get into, and that's one thing uh, we get some criticism uh, on the channel for. Well, you know, we like it when you do the way things used to be, and we like it when you did this, this, or that. I, I don't want to become comfortably numb, and so that's why I always like to try new things or different things. And, and some folks may get frustrated. It's like, well, you tried this, and you never really saw this through, or, or, or how come you're not taking this next to the next level? It's because I, I, I don't want to become uh, that person. I, I, I like to, um, I, I still feel as young uh, as I did when I graduated high school. I never, I, I don't feel old. I don't feel like, uh, oh, you know, I need to settle down, need to stop doing things. I, I feel like I could do anything now that I ever have been able to do. Uh, maybe not as fast, but, uh, and that's probably just because I don't, uh, because I eat too much. But, <laughs> but uh, I think that's good advice is, is that there's a lot of folks that I've ran into that have just sit, sat down and died. Uh, my granddad was a good example. He stayed young. Uh, he retired from, he only had two jobs. Uh, after he gra er, graduated, after he got out of the service in World War II, and he worked for two different companies. And the only reason why he left the first job was uh, he'd, uh, w they wouldn't let him go elk cutting. He packed up his tools and left and went elk cutting, came back and got another job, and he worked that the rest of his life until he retired. So, um, yeah, and so he was, he, even when he, after, but even after that, he, he went back to work, and he always was doing new things and, and did, just did, didn't sit down and, and give up. Let's continue on. I think we're on a roll here. Uh, don't keep all of your best jokes for your men, friends. Let your wife share them. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not very good at jokes. That doesn't really speak to me. Don't look at things solely from a man's point of view. Put yourself in your wife's place and see how you would like to, to like some of the things uh, she has to put up with. Ooh, there's a lot in that one. We could do a whole video on that one. So uh, regardless of what everyone is or the current trend is telling us is that there there is a difference between men and women. Um, anyone who has lived a life and hasn't been um, um, uh, made crazy or indoctrinated by some crazy college uh, realizes that the diff there's a difference between men and women. We have different. Uh, we complement one another, um, and there's it's, should, there is no uh, there's no room in a marriage to have a, a war of the sexes. Um, uh, this is I, I'm gonna. I'm going to go off on different extremes here because the things just come to my mind and I speak them. Uh, many of the, what's interesting uh, in a lot of the comments that I get is when, uh, if there's something that's got to do with a, a, a mutual decision or I'm doing something, um, all these comments come in. It's like, man, your wife's going to kill you. Man, Mrs. W is going to, she's going to kill you for that. Or she's going to, she's really going to be mad. If that's the way that you, uh, the relationship that you have with your wife, um, man, I am sorry. That's re really sad that, that you have to have that, that, that anger or that fear that, that someone is going to chastise you or you have to be like a little child and, and your wife is like a mother to you that, that you have to hide things or, or, or skulk around. I, I just don't understand that. I, I don't have that relationship. Um, do we get along all of the time? Do we agree 100% on everything? No, of course not. But we, we respect one another and we don't, uh, there is none of that. Uh, so, um, I guess, I don't know how, what that has to do with, with, with the point that I was trying to make with what that has to do with, um, uh, would like see things from her perspective. Ah, it doesn't make any difference. We, we go our own way on manly matters, but that's probably, <laughs> probably enough for today. So, uh, I guess the point to, to, to draw this all into conclusion is to, um, 
you're never too old to try new things. I think it's just delightful when I see uh, folks in their uh, 80s and 90s that are signing up for classes, whether it be horticulture or, or bird watching or, or taking on new things or, or getting into reading. Uh, and the other thing is, is, um, is that to be respectful towards one another. And if your wife uh, it, it does that, if she's nagging you all the time and, and always looking over your shoulder and treating you like a child, you know what? You, deal with that you, you sit her down and, and explain to her hey um I, I don't want i don't want this anymore i want us to be uh, equal uh, i want i want us to show respect for one another and um, i think a lot of that will be cleared up by communication uh, make sure that you're on the same page when you're desi when you're interested in something. Let's say you want to go buy a new gun or something, uh, make the case. You know, don't uh, sneak around and go buy something behind her back, and then she feels betrayed and doesn't feel like she was made part of the whole deal because, you know, the resources, financial resources for the family, uh, are are for everyone, not just for you. And I think it's disrespectful to not at least consult. Uh, I'll close with this. My old neighbor. Henry, from you, some of you guys in the Wrangler Barn days will remember Henry. He actually sadly passed away last year. Um, this year, uh, had to deal with his wife, uh, Marion, uh, that if they ever spent more than $100, then they, then they talked about it. Um, and, and I always thought that that was a nice plan. And that was, you know, may, maybe that's a little bit low. You might, you have to set that for your own family member. But he, he harped on that all the time. And he considered that to be one of the main successes for his, his, why he had a successful marriage and why they got along so well. Because finances are probably the number one point of contention in, in marriages. So um, be o open, uh, put it out there and, and discuss it and show your loved ones respect. And, and if you want something that's important to you, explain that to them and make the case and make sure that there's reciprocity with that too. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.